their debut on the Late Late Show 15 years ago in 1993, and this is now. The success of the Boys' Own Reunion Tour and the release of their first single in eight years gave Stephen a new lease of life. The first Boys' Own Tour was just, it was massive. Stephen loved being back with the boys because it was almost like he lost his family. They were all back together again. Showing on my face, proving me wrong. I'd never, ever seen him happier as a person. I'd never, he was never really enjoying his life more than in the last Boys' Own Tour. It was like he'd just been reborn. Things were certainly looking up. The boys were planning to record a new album. Stephen was in the process of finishing yet another new project, his first children's book, which he had entitled The Tree of Seasons. Everything was going incredible. We had 30 songs picked for our new album. We were never in a better place in our lives. We were planning another big tour. Stephen and Andrew were taking a break in their holiday home in Mallorca. On the morning of Saturday, the 10th of October, after a night out, Stephen went to sleep on the sofa, but never woke up. The boy's own star was dead at the age of 33. It was a Saturday night. I just finished X Factor in London. And after X Factor, I get loads and loads of texts on my phone. And there was a text on it, Jesus, is Stephen dead? And I, I didn't know what to make of it. And then I saw a missed call from Michael Graham. And then I rang and Michael told me. He said, Stephen is dead. And he was like hysterical on the phone. And I just hung up the phone. Then Ronan rang me. Then my phone went crazy. Everybody was ringing me from everywhere. I didn't know what to say. So on the Sunday, I talked to Andy. And it was gradually sinking in that somebody who was a very important part of my life was dead. And, I mean, I wouldn't be here today only for boys home. That's the problem. And it's really hard to accept that somebody that was so nice and was so good and was so young was gone. And that was the hardest thing. It still hasn't sunk in with me, really. The post-mortem on Stephen Gately's body was carried out at this mortuary in Palma. The result showed that the boy's own star died of acute pulmonary oedema, an accumulation of fluid on the lungs. The investigation into Stephen Gately's death continues, but is at this stage just a formality. But we know that nothing will ever be the same without our dearest friend, Stephen. Rest in peace, brother. The boys went to Mallorca to bring Stephen's body home. Speculation was rife as to how someone so young could die so suddenly. While most of the media coverage focused on Stephen's life and the tragedy of his death, some looked for scandal. I think some of the dissecting of the manner of his death was, was prurient. It's almost as if that this is another chapter in a story rather than a genuine human tragedy and a source of massive grief, mostly for his family and his, his close friends. The shock of Stephen's death soon reached the people of Sheriff Street. It's just it was a tragic, tragic situation. For him, for him, for his family, for his partner, for the community at large, for, the, for everyone. Lord on high, hear my prayer in my need. You have always been there. The eyes of the world turned towards Sheriff Street as hundreds of photographers and television crews arrived to the north inner city to cover Stephen's funeral. Stephen's neighbours and friends were determined that the Church of St. Lawrence O'Toole's would be immaculate for his homecoming. Sheriff Street lad whose life had been so cruelly cut short was coming home. Stephen was back into the arms of a community that had looked up to him as a local hero. Ronan, Mikey, Keith and Shane 
had made a solemn promise to Stephen's mother, Margaret, that they would stay with Stephen in St. Lawrence O'Toole's church overnight. In life, he'd always been afraid of the dark. You know, Sheriff Street, inner city Dublin, it gets bad press, you know, but the people in church are real people. They're really, they're honest, you know, there's nothing fake about them. And there was nothing fake or put on about that whole ceremony. It was, a, it was very emotional. I think he would have absolutely loved it. On the morning of Saturday, the 17th of October, Stephen's family and friends came together to mourn him. And I just kept saying he would have just, he just would have been, he would have loved it, particularly because the church was so close to where he lived. I mean, if you were staging it for a movie, it, you, you, you couldn't have got it so perfectly in its design. And... One night, I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. I, I was really honoured to be asked to read the prayer after communion, Footprints in the Sand, which was Stephen's favourite prayer. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? I read the prayer, almost lost it a couple of times, and I looked at the coffin and looked down at Andrew and said, hold it together, hold it together, and got through the prayer. And I barely made it to the seat between my partner, Gary, and, and uh, Caroline Downey. I sat between the two of them. I actually, that's when I just let go completely. A man, a friend, a brother, a son, a husband, and a hero. We're gonna really miss your brother. Love you. It was sad, and it got to everybody. But at the same time, we do have to celebrate his life because he did have a great, great life and he did an awful lot of things that he wanted to do. One of the gifts at the Mass that was brought up was his uh, moisturiser. It was a really funny moment because after the service, I said to Andrew, you know, what about the moisturiser going up? And he said, yeah, what was worse, they brought up Creme de la Mer and Stephen only used La Prairie. Stephen's legacy will live on, especially in the hearts of his family, his friends, and the people of Sheriff Street. It's shown kids that if by hard work, you can get someplace. He worked damn hard to get where he was. And it's an inspiration to, to, to kids to, to, to follow that. Stephen always credits me for changing his life, but actually it's the other way around because he helped me so much. He was a real little pop star. What I really will remember is his huge, big, warm, friendly smile. He just had the most amazing smile that lit up a stage and lit up a room. I don't know a single person who didn't love Stephen. Stephen was like that little bright star at the start of every Disney program. You know, when you wish upon a star, and it was always a shooting star. It was always just here for a short time. And that sense of, you know, only the good die young. Only the good are the shooting star. They're just here for a short time. Every night this shooting star Dancing across the twilight sky because he knows he doesn't quite fit in He's long into 